<laughs> hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another Gunpla Review and today I'm taking a look at the SD Build Divers RX Zero Maru Shinki Kesho. Once again, as usual, this video right here would not be possible without those awesome people over at Hobby Link Japan. So if you want a Shinki Kesho of your own, then check out that link down there in the description. So this right here is what the Zero Maru Shinki Kesho will look like out of the box and put together with no effort whatsoever. That sheet of stickers is insane! I don't know if I've ever featured an SD kit on this channel before, I have built quite a few, and usually they're not necessarily what I'm looking for when I'm looking at Gunpla. What really got me into Gunpla in the first place is the detail, the awesomeness of the kits, how accurate they are to what you see in the anime and mangas. But as for SDs, I guess they're just a little bit of fun, and because I wanted something quick to build and quick to review for today, I went for this and thought it would be easy and... It's not. As for the actual build, of course that is quite simple, but the big obvious glaring issue is the fact that this is barely color accurate whatsoever. And the fact that the RX Zero Maru is such a detailed little robot that in the end this really does not work out so much. So many stickers to apply, or if you're going to paint it, there's going to be a lot of extra work in here. So this isn't just a sit down, throw it together in an hour or two sort of kit like I thought it would be. This takes a lot of extra work on your own part. So keep in mind, if you do want one of these of your own, or the standard RX Zero Maru that it's based on, there's going to be a lot of painting or a lot of stickers involved. A lot. Besides that aspect though, it does look pretty cool. Here's an image off the side of the box of what it will look like if you do put that extra effort in, and it's quite an awesome looking little kit. As for the actual colors we do see in this box, we've got the white, that metallic injection gold, and this pretty cool metallic injection green. Before I actually get into the accessories, this kit itself does have two forms. That is this one you're seeing right here. That of course is the Shinobi form. And just like with the Unicorn Gundam, this has a second form where the face closes down, that massive Maedate on its head, that folds in, and finally you flip the feet around like this, and that is the second form, which of course is the Kakure form. So moving on to the accessories, and here is the Zero Maru Shinki Kesho with everything that it comes with. And just like the little mobile suit itself, all of these suffer from the exact same issue, which is color accuracy. But as for what we do actually get in here, we get a bunch of weapons, some parts for the transformation, as well as this bird back here, which is the armed armor Hattori Kiwami. So what we actually have in here is two sets of hands, that's the standard holding hands, as well as these posed hands in that typical ninja pose. Weapon-wise, we've got this tiny little katana that's just cast in white plastic, this unique looking beam rifle, this can be used with these launcher sections that attach underneath the wings of the Hattori Kiwami. This doesn't really hold on particularly well, but it does lengthen that rifle and make it look a little bit more powerful. As for the armed armor Hattori Kiwami, as you can see just by looking at this, this is all the parts that will make up that transformation to the standard sized Gundam that this thing has. This has multiple modes, the first of course is this bird mode. We do have a bit of articulation at the wings as well as these feet down here, nothing too crazy. This can all disassemble and reassemble as a backpack for the Zero Maru that really, truly gives it that full armor unicorn vibe. While in this form we can attach this huge flame section, which was its scarf, onto the sword like this, which looks pretty cool, and all three of those shields can attach together into the Sampo Dai Shuriken. So before I actually talk about the full transformation to the full-sized Gundam, I will actually go through the articulation on this guy. Of course, it is extremely basic as you'd expect, but as always, let's go from the head down. So the head on here is just a single ball joint. You're not going to get a whole lot out of that. Up, down, slight side to side tilt, and that is not going... Oh, it does go all the way around. Of course, this can close up as part of that transformation. This can pull down over the eyes. And speaking of the eyes, they can be swapped around just like so which is pretty standard for an SD kit. So at the shoulder, the shoulder armor is attached to the upper section of the arm, so that does move with the arm. Around on the back, we've got this little wing section that can rotate down like this, as well as up like that. We have a little ball joint in underneath here that can let the arm move up, as well as a little bit of forward and back. There is a very minor bend at the elbow here. Not too bad. The wrist is just your standard ball joint, not much there. At the waist, we've got very slight rotation, nothing much at all. All the skirting armor around the waist, there's nothing there on the back, sides, or front, all static. 
We have another ball and socket in here at the waist, so that is all the way to the back, all the way to the front, there is all the way out to the side, so not a whole lot, and as for that bend at the knee, there we go, that is it at the knee. As for the ankle, that is another ball joint, so we've got up and down like this, side to side pivot, this bit of armor here, that is also on a ball joint, so that can move ever so slightly up and down like this, and a little bit of side to side, but not a whole lot. And lastly, round here on the back, we've got this bit of a scarf section that can move just up and down like so. So all in all, extremely basic articulation. So finally now onto the transformation to uh, Nintendo mode. And using all those parts in the backpack that came from the armed armor Hattori Kiwami, a lot of those parts are used for extending the limbs and body in order to give it the general silhouette of an actual full-sized high-grade Gundam. This is a full-on parts formation right here. You pull it all apart and just reassemble it the way it shows in the instructions and, and although it is quite simple, it can be a little bit confusing because this thing literally completely disassembles before you put it back together again. But anyway, there is what it looks like, finally, in Nintodo mode. The same goes with weapons, the sword and the shield attach onto what made up the central section of the Hattori. And then we end up with this right here, which is a huge weapon called the Beam Zambato. So finally, there's what it looks like in Ninto Do mode. And honestly, this looks better than I expected. Of course, it would look so much, so much better if you painted all those parts that are meant to be green. But honestly, this doesn't look too bad besides those stubby little arms. It's pretty cool. Of course, the articulation isn't really all that great. And because I am a little bit out of time today for this review, the standard version of the Zero Maro is on the way from Hobby Link. They've gotten it back in stock. So I'll take a look at this in Nintodo mode at the same time as the standard RX Zero Maro. I assume they're fairly similar. I'll look at the differences between the two then. But anyway, that is it for the review. All I can say is I can't really rank this. This is the first time I believe that I've ever featured an SD kit on the channel. So I know they do have a lot of stickers. They're very basic, and at the end of the day, they're just something to put on your shelf or on your desk that looks cute. And that is exactly what it does, and it has a fun transformation on top of that. Just remember, when you are building this right here, it's going to take a lot, and I mean a lot of extra effort to make it look good. Either use the stickers or even better paint it, but it is a pretty big job. As usual, if you do want one of your own, there is a link down there in the description. You can get yours at Hobby Link Japan. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews, and I'll see you next time.